Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and help you guys out with trying to understand how to find cheaper cluster jewels in Path of Exile. Now this isn't just necessarily for my Righteous Fire build, but the main focus is for my Righteous Fire build, but you could use this knowledge to pretty much anything, right? So let's get started. Number one, why do you use cluster jewels? Well, typically the reason for cluster jewels is very efficient pathing and the ability to stack rare jewels, which are typically multipliers for, at least for Righteous Fire, right? If you're non-Righteous Fire, typically you'll be stacking like crit, crit multi, whatever. For us, it's like stacking sources of fire multi and increased damage. Um, so an example would be like, over here we spend three points to unlock a jewel, right? And then we get Ellie damage, we get big Ellie damage, we get Ellie damage, all res, we spend one point of traveling, and then again we have damage, 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 and then a jewel, which is like multiplier, right? Uh, a big part of this as well is whenever you decide to chop this bottom part, when you go Aegis melding, you can, instead of spending all these points to travel, you're literally just getting damage and fixing survivability with gear. So let's talk about clusters. If you were to just carbon copy my clusters, I'm gonna show you why this is a big mistake a lot of people have. And this is why I've spent so much time in my guides trying to explain to newer players how to actually play their build, right? How you want, so, so essentially, if you look here, I have a prismatic heart, sadist disorienting display. So I went ahead and I searched this and it's actually much cheaper than it was earlier. It's about five exalt, which is still ridiculous, right? On five exalt, you can get a six link, you can get your maven boots, you can get an RF helmet, you can get an RF weapon, you, you can probably even snag like an awakened ink AOE gem. So why spend five exalt on a cluster jewel? The answer is, don't. Do not spend five exalts on a cluster jewel. I'm going to explain here why in just a second. So before we get started on this, there's a lot of topics to cover. So uh, let's talk about how you can understand where what notable is on a cluster jewel. So when you're looking at PoE trade, you'll notice it just says like sadist, disorienting display, prismatic heart, but you don't know where they are. So an example of what I'm referring to is you don't know what is in the back. And typically the one in the back is the one you don't want to take. You can still take it, but most people don't want to take the one in the back. So a simple way to understand this is the following. There's two ways. Number one, you can make a new POB and you can create the jewel and put it in and you can see where it ends up. So example here, I have a Doriani's lesson with a prismatic heart. And the reasoning for this is to push Prismatic Heart into the front because I think Prismatic Heart is insane, right? So this allows me to grab Prismatic Heart. Now, what is the difference between this Cluster Jewel and the one I just showed you over here? The difference is that this one is spending five exalts to get Sadist, when in reality, this is still giving me like a 12% damage node, right? This is literally spending five exalts to get Sadist. You don't need to spend five exalts to get sadist. It's not necessary when you could buy, for example, uh, let's let's go ahead and put this one in in uh, the trade search. So if we go back, right, and we search the uh, Doriani's Lesson Prismatic Heart, right? So we're going to go over here. We don't need this anymore. So we're going to do Prismatic Heart and Doriani's Lesson Search. You can see here these jewels are about 20 chaos each so a way to double check to confirm which you don't have to do this but this is what i was saying there's one way or the other you can click copy on the item then you can go over here and do create custom paste it add it to your build and then you can drag it to your gem or your jewel socket and you can see exactly where it's putting everything so here's the one i just snagged off trade that was 20c and then you get the branch to your mediums and you get the branch to your smalls or you stack your rare jewels. Now, another way to understand how this works is the following. Let me go ahead and create a, um, a cluster jewel. Oops, down here. So cluster jewel large. Now, the main reason why I'm talking about larges is because you know where everything is on a medium and you know where everything is on a small. So I just felt large was the most important to talk about. So we're gonna do fire damage. Now, in the past, we used to stack a lot of Burning Bright. So let's try to figure out how to get Burning Bright in the front. So if I add this right here, Burning Bright's always going to be in the back because if you have a single notable Cluster Jewel, it's always in the back, always. 
let's fix that. So step one, I like to add the suffixes first. So let's add disorienting display. Save. Disorienting display pushes burning bright into the back, which means if we search for this combination of cluster jewel, this will always work. So let's look. Burning bright and was it again disorienting display? So search burning bright and disorienting display search. This goes for about 30 chaos. All you have to do to confirm again, you just yoink it here and you go check. Um, we can search for another combination just to see if we can find one cheaper. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because you, you get the idea, right? Let's do Doriani's lesson save. That also works. So we can try Doriani's lesson. Doriani's lesson search that's a little bit more expensive we'll do one more search tag real fast let's try a uh, try good old widespread destruction okay widespread pushes in the back so no they're all about like the same price uh so next i want to talk about the next big function which is understanding what this is right here so to get this, you just type in enchant and you type or you select the added right here, adds number of passive skill points. The reason this is important is if you say search a nine passive large fire cluster or whatever cluster it is that you take, let's take one with a notable right here, right? Let's just go ahead and copy this. So we're going to add this one right here, add it to build and socket it right here. You'll notice there is an extra sneaky little spot right here. Which means if your large cluster is not eight passive, you're spending an extra point to branch out to the jewel socket, which I don't really recommend. Because then you're spending one point on like 12% increased damage, which is not as, it's not very good. Uh, so you always want to look for eight passive on your large. Um, right. Then going on to the next step, we're going to talk about our, um, our mediums. Now, mediums are not nearly as a big deal because I feel like the large is the one where most people sink their currency into. Um, but let's use an example here. So I like flow of life a lot. So flow of life. And then we're going to do enchant adds number of passives four to five. And then for the sake of this, I'm just going to do fire or burning damage. So enchant um, this here. I didn't do it on the large cluster, but basically what this is, is this forces your cluster type. So if I do burning damage here, it'll only pop up burning damage clusters. Now, there is something a little uh, a little finicky you have to look at with these. It's not a super big deal, but if you grab a five passive cluster with two notables, you're good. If you grab a four, pa or sorry, if you grab a five passive with only one, you're not good. And I'll, I'll explain here in just a second. So if we create custom, oh, you know, I clicked the wrong thing out of force of habit. I wanted to uh, trade that guy. Okay. Create, add to build. So here we're just going to simply go there, put in our medium. And here you can see our medium, right? So one, two, three, and four, just like that. Beautiful, right? If, uh, can, let's see, let me grab another one here. If you say had a five passive with only flow of life, right? Could be, I actually could be wrong on this one. Whoops. We're going to put this one right over here. Okay. And you can see here, you have to go one, two, three, four. If, for example, this one was only four instead of five, so cluster jewel medium, which one is it? This one? Yeah, this one. We're just going to edit this to be four passive instead. Then you can actually save a point and go right to the jewel instead of taking this. So TLDR, if you are going for a large cluster, you want an eight passive. If you are going for a medium cluster and you have two notables, you want four or five. 
if you are going only after a single notable, you want four. This isn't too big of a deal, though, because usually you can find relatively cheap clusters that have two notables that maybe the second notable is not like a big deal like so for example here you can see this guy here has like hemorrhage um which i don't even know why that rolls on well okay i guess that's for ignite uh let's scroll down a little more here is like okay this is 30 c circling oblivion this is not bad right it's 25 percent increased damage for one point with flow of life if it's if it's like above 20 percent damage for one point i consider it like pretty solid that's like my typical my typical go-to 18 to 20 percent damage per point is very efficient uh but yeah anyway that's pretty much about it so i hope this helped you guys out with understanding how to properly search cluster jewels hopefully it should save you guys a lot of currency i just have seen so many people complaining about being stuck in x tier map because they're trying to increase their damage but cluster jewels are just far too expensive for them so i really wanted to create something that helps you guys out so you can understand how to progress as well anyway that's pretty much about it if you guys like the video please feel free to like share and subscribe and don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day but sundays at twitch.tv slash pox see you guys all tomorrow